Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and this lesson is about inverse variation. This is a variation where if one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. All right, they're inversely related or inverse, um, they're very inversely to each other. All right, this is our third lesson on variation. We've talked about direct variation, quadratic variation, and this is our third lesson, inverse variation. I think as, as we move along, the trick sometimes is that you'll get a test that has all three in them. And you have to look very closely at what it's asking for. So this is, that's why I've been kind of giving you the big idea here in gray. For inverse variation, one gets bigger, one gets smaller. Let's look at some examples of inverse variation. All right, again, basically we have two variables, f of x and x. And they have an inverse relationship, or they vary inversely to each other. So if x increases, f of x decreases, and vice versa. And here is the equation for inverse variation. The function at x is equal to our constant divided by x. And here is the table. I think these tables make a lot more sense, to me at least, um, when I'm looking at it than, than looking at an equation. So I'm given this table and asked to find the constant and then solve to fill in the missing you know, sections here, here, and here. I'm given that um, in this column here, I have 1 and 24. So I'm going to use that information. My x value is 1. My function at x value is 24. I'm going to use that information to solve for my constant. So I'll rearrange the equation to get constant by itself. I'll put the function at x in there and the value of x so 24 and 1, 24 times 1 is 24. Therefore, my constant is 24. I can go ahead and plug that directly into our original equation. So my constant of 24 is going to go in there. For all the other ones, I just need to substitute my x value right in there. 24 divided by 2, 24 divided by 3, 24 divided by 4. And I'll go ahead and do that. 24 divided by 2 is 12, so I'm going to put 12 up here in the table. 24 divided by 3 gives me 8, so I'll put that in the table. And the last one, 24 divided by 4, which gives me 6. So I've been able to solve this entire table, all right? 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. You might notice that these are all factors of 24. And that's what inverse variation looks like. One side is increasing, 1, 2, 3, 4. The other one is decreasing, 24, 12, 8, 6. Notice that's decreasing while this one increases. And also notice that the numbers multiplied together will always give you your constant. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Now, there may be negatives in there and fractions, and it'll get a little bit more complicated. But for me, inverse operation is the easiest one to pick out because you can just look. Do they multiply together to give you that constant? All right, let's look at an example now. Your job is to determine, is this inverse variation? First off, I do a quick check. Is this increasing? Yeah, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then this should be decreasing. 3, 2.4, 2, 1.7. Yeah. <clears throat> so when this one increases, this one decreases. So it could be inverse variation. Now what I need to do is to check for it each column and make sure that it matches up with our constant. All right? So let's go ahead and look for that constant of variation, the variable of k. We're going to use this equation, which is just this one rearranged. We're just multiplying both sides times x. So our constant is equal to our f of x times x. So 3 times 4, which is 12. Perfect. Next one, my function of x is equal to 2.4. My x value is 5. 2.4 times 5 gives me 12. Very nice. And my next column, I have my function of x is equal to 2. My x value is 6. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So it's looking good so far. But I'm not going to quit at this point. I'm going to go ahead and check my final column as well. My function of x value, 
times my x value, 1.7 times 7 gives me 11.9. See that? So it's a good thing I checked that final column. That and I made up the lesson, so obviously I knew to check that final column. But if it was just these three columns, then we would have had an inverse variation table. Because I added in this one that's not quite right, what happens is this table then is therefore not representative of an inverse variation function. All right? Because that one didn't have the same constant. If it did have the constant of 12, then it would be inverse variation. So a couple things to remember about inverse variation. That's our formula there. The function of x is equal to our constant divided by our x value. When one increases, the other decreases. Check for the constant of variation using this equation. Our function at x times our x value gives us our constant of variation.